Hey guys, welcome back to Dub's Garage. Uh, my first video got uh, blacklisted by YouTube because I was playing iTunes in the background and apparently I had it too loud and they picked up on it. So uh, Big Brother is always watching. Uh, here's a shot of the manual I bought from my Mustang. I uh, got it at shop, mustangshopmanual.com. Uh, packed full of good information. So if you don't have a shop manual yet, don't buy a paper version. Uh, get this one. You can uh, download it to three devices and uh, save it on there. And you can also print the sections out as you need it as many times as you want. It's actually a PDF file. Okay, I've been uh, messing around here with this thing, trying to get the preload set on the pinion bearing here. So right now the ring gear is not in it. It's just the pinion. And I'm, I'm real close here. So my problem right now is the new uh, crush sleeve that I got uh, for my Yukon axle sets won't crush for some reason, so it may not even be a crush sleeve, I don't know, it's different from from the stock one, the OEM. The OEM looks kind of like a mushroom, it's got a little bulge in it right here to help it crush, so what I did was I uh, took a grinder on the, the new one and just kind of shaved a few thousandths off of it and then I used a hone to uh, smooth it out and everything, and I did it the first Here's the uh, crust sleeve I was trying to hone down. Well, I thought I'd better show you this, uh, how that works. So this is the inch pounds torque wrench. And let me get you off of here. Okay, that's my first pull there, so about 28 pounds. Okay, so I'm watching the SpaceX launch here too, so I'm going to torque this down to 140. I'm just going to go almost to it. Click. Okay, so that's my minimum torque value. All right, I'm liking that. That feels a lot better. So that means I can get that nut just a little bit tighter now. Uh, let's get my wrench here. Right. See what we got now. Okay, so. I am, I got, I can go probably at least another 20 pounds on my torque. I like that. Put that other shim in and uh, torqued it down and I'm at, uh, the minimum minimum torque on the nut is 140 to get your preload. I've got the preload right now is about 18. Um, the preload should be um, 17 to 27. So. I think the first couple of times I did this, uh, I was getting a little greedy on my uh, torque wrench and I would always give it a second pull after it clicked. And I'm learning that don't do that <laughs> because the nut still moved and uh, it over torqued it. So I'm at a point now that uh, I'm at 148, see I'm set at 148 pounds on my uh, torque wrench. And like I said, I'm about 17, 18 on my um, preload. So I'm going to torque it one more time and then I'll check the preload. And don't laugh at my rigging, but this is all I got. Okay, there's 148. <clears throat> so let's check the preload and see what I got. Feels tight. So the, the bad thing with a crush sleeve is if you over crush it, you got to get a new sleeve or shim it. So 
So I'm at 20 inch pounds, 19 to 20 inch pounds. So let me, let me turn this over a couple of times, make sure them bearings are good and seated in there. Okay, I'll put it on there again. Yeah, I'm still about 18, maybe 19, in the 19, 20 range. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go up a couple of more pounds and uh, get that a little bit tighter and get a little bit more preload on that because I did put new bearings and everything. So I'm at uh, 148 foot pounds now, so I'm gonna go 150. Uh, I gotta put my rigging on. You know, guys, I think I'm on a wait. Check my specs again. 17 to 27. I'm going to stop right there. I'm afraid if I go any further, I'm going to have to end up cutting another shim, but that's pretty dang tight right there. Um, so what I'll do is I keep a notebook on all my stuff here, and I'll just put what I put that torque value at, and it's 148 foot-pounds. And... Uh, and about 18 19 inch pounds on the preload so <clears throat> i'm gonna leave well enough alone okay here's one of the sections where i had my music too loud and uh, youtube blocked me so i'm getting ready to put the differential carrier in with the ring gear um, i was talking about some alignment marks and so in my manual i bought they talked about timing marks and the pinion has a mark on it um and painted in with a groove and then the ring gear also has uh, a paint mark between two teeth so the idea here is to uh, put the the ring gear in the carrier and get those two teeth on the ring gear lined up with the with the tooth on the pinion so uh, the manual also talked about hunting and non-hunting gears and uh, to be honest with you guys that's I I understand it but I don't know if I could describe it so um, if, if you get there's not going to be any harm by putting that in uh, on the timing marks so it either goes in the timing marks or it doesn't okay so I'm putting the uh, differential carrier in and got it aligned on the timing marks and now um, I'll have to put the uh, adjustment nuts on and uh, with the adjustment nuts uh, in the book it calls out for the differential ring gear to be pushed all the way to the right hand side or the passenger side of the vehicle so I pre-lubed all, the, that's a threaded nut, so half the threads is in that carrier, or in that cap, and the other half are machined into the, the housing. So you wanna make sure uh, you put that adjustment nut in first, and make sure it turns freely. And then you can put your, your bearing caps on. So the uh, getting those in there is a little tricky, um, but when you first first get them in, make sure they turn freely, and then you can install your bearing caps on both sides.
Okay, so I initially uh, hand tightened these uh, bearing caps down, got them good and snug, and then made sure the adjustment nuts were still free and I could easily turn them with my little uh, tool. Um, and then eventually I torqued them half of the torque value. So I think they had a torque value of 30 foot pounds and I I took them to like 15 foot bound pounds and that's what the manual called off uh, for that to be. Uh, here I'm explaining the uh, locking tabs that go onto the adjustment nuts. So uh, you put those on last, but they're, uh, uh, you'll see here later on in the video that uh, you gotta get them spot on and then that uh, while you're adjusting your backlash and your uh, uh, case spread. Okay, once you have the bearing caps on and you get them torqued down to half of the torque value, then you want to uh, loosen and look in the, the retaining tab hole and look at the uh, bearing cap and loosen the adjustment nut on the passenger side until it's not touching anymore with the ring gear shoved all the way over to the right side or the passenger side. So then once you do that, um, you can take and tighten the driver's side or the left-hand side until it's pushed all the way over to the right and the, the ring gear starts to bind up in the pinion, making it difficult to turn. So when you get that done, you want to snug up the right side, adjusting nut. And then on the left side, you'll turn that adjusting nut one hole. There's like 10 or 15 holes on that adjusting nut. So you'll turn that, loosen it one hole, one to two holes, and uh, then tighten the right side up until it's snug. And then you should it should be a little bit tight, but not uh, so tight you can't turn it freely. Then you can get set up for your uh, case spread and the uh, backlash. Alright, it's been a, probably a half an hour here. I've been fiddling around with this silly thing uh, back and forth a little bit. And uh, it, it's kind of tricky because you got, you got to set your preload on your bearings, on your differential bearings here and here. So if you loosen this one and tighten that one, it's going to push the ring gear further into the pinion. And then the... Um, that's going to decrease your backlash. So if you're going to push it this way, if you push it the other way, so you loosen this one and tighten this one, you um, move it further away from the pinion, and that'll increase your backlash. So I'm at, I'm right at the spec here. They're calling um, eight to twelve thousandths on that backlash on the ring gear. Um, I'm gonna leave it right there because I'm. You've got the other trick is is you got your bolts here, and you got your lock tabs that go on there. So that hooks around here, and then you got to put your bolt in there and tighten that down. That keeps that uh, adjusting that from moving. And those got to be 
almost centered. Uh, it gives you a little bit of play in there, but, um, and then, you know, the nut, I, the bolt, I believe, uh, will go in and it may hit the threads. I haven't measured that yet, but it may go in there and hit all that stuff. But um, anyway, it doesn't give you much room here to get a finite adjustment on backlash or your case spread. So I was about five thousandths on the case spread, which is this way. You're in the first adjustment, so they're wanting to know how much you're moving the case back and forth to set your preload. And then once you do that, you go to your backlash. You check your backlash. I had none, so I had to loosen the left nut a, a hole and I'll show you what I talk, I'm talking about here on the hole so on your the hole on your nut you see that there you go all right so that's your adjustment hole and that's got to line up with the bolt hole so <clears throat> you loosen it one hole and tighten it one hole and just keep going kind of back and forth until you get your backlash where you want it. And I've kind of run out of adjustments there. So anyway, it's together. Um, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, it's a little bit tighter than, uh, than before. Uh, I'm just beginning to wonder if somebody didn't come in here and do something with it. So my next check is the... Uh, I'll paint these teeth. And we'll do a rotation check and final torque on everything. And we'll do one more check on backlash and then we'll be done. I'll be able to button it up. And uh, This is just a clip of uh, showing the backlash adjustment there and what my final measurement was. Okay, that's just showing the, the contact pattern of the pinion to the ring gear. Okay, here's the oil seal. And it uh, sets right up inside here. I'm gonna get this one pounded in. Too big, and instead of cutting gaskets, I'm gonna make my own here with some RTV. Just the blue. This would be basically just to keep the moisture out um, of that. Uh, sealed for life bearing. You put a little never seize on there or uh, anti seize. This is copper, you can use silver. Just put a little bit, on, just a little dab on the threads. So here's the uh, backing plate. You want to make sure the parking brake hole, the cable for the hole, or the hole for the cable, uh, goes towards the front. Put a little oil. This is just motor oil. Put a little on there. And then I'll put a little this assembly goo. Um, basically, it's Vaseline. I'll just put a little bit on the where the seal rides here. Put a little bit on this uh, spacer and another little dab on this uh, outer race just to make things easy to get apart if someday I got to take it apart which I hope I don't but if I do it now then I won't have to and then I'll put a little dab of silicone on here a little bit goes a long way on this. Now I think we're going to be ready to go in, and then I'll uh, this little tool I can slide into the in between the differential and the, the shaft tube. That way, when it gets to the end, I can pick it up and slide it into the hole.
come in and see the hub turning on the other end. So now I'll just uh, hammer in the drift, tap these bearings, tap this bearing housing in. Or fine thread lock nuts. It's part of the reason why I didn't change them out. I don't have any fine thread lock nuts. All they got is coarse thread. Let me get these started back here. Let me try that. Okay, just cleaning up the uh, back of the differential. I'm going to put some of the black RTV on that uh, was provided by Yukon Axle in the, in the kit I bought. And uh, this is another segment here where I have my little radio playing in the background on iTunes and they, uh, YouTube didn't like it. So anyway, I can, I can, I can understand that... Uh, why YouTube blocked it, you know, the different recording artists have have to make money too, so if they if it's uh, not copyrighted or whatever, then, uh, you know, we shouldn't be uh, playing it on YouTube, so anyway, hopefully uh, I'm in their good graces again. So anyway, just going to run these bolts down and uh, get everything tightened up. Well, got everything finished up and I uh, got new wheel cylinders from O'Reilly's and brake shoes and stuff uh, from O'Reilly's. I ordered them online, got the brakes all on. And uh, so it's ready to go back in now. Uh, I'll get back onto the body work and get the floor pans in and maybe this fall I'll uh, get the rear axle and the leaf rings back on and uh, we'll set it on the ground. Thanks for watching.